knows what other parasitic stuff is going on out there, and even in a larger sense, God knows what other unseen realms of biology uh, make our behavior far less uh, autonomous than lots of folks would like to think. Okay, so humans with parasite infections like Toxo, um, big prevalence uh, in certain parts of the world. It's a higher prevalence in the tropics, uh, where typically more than 50% of people are infected. Lower rates in more temperate zones for reasons I do not understand and do not choose to speculate on. France has really high rates of Toxo infection. I think in much of the developed. One interesting additional thing about Toxo is there's a long-standing literature absolutely solidly shows there's a statistical link between Toxo infection and schizophrenia. It's not a big link, but it's solidly there. Schizophrenics have higher than expected rates of having been infected with Toxo, and not particularly the case for other related parasites. Uh, links schizophrenia, mothers had house cats during pregnancy. There's a whole literature with that. So where does that fit in? Two really interesting things. Back to dopamine, that tyrosine hydroxylase gene that Toxo somehow ripped off from mammals. Hydroxylase gene that Toxo somehow ripped off from mammals, which allows it to make more dopamine. Dopamine levels are too high in schizophrenia. That's the leading suggestion of what neurochemically that's about. You take Toxo infected rodents and their brains have elevated levels of dopamine. Final deal is, and this came from the Webster's group, you take a rat who's been toxo infected and who's now at the state where you would find cat urine to be attractive, and you give it drugs that block dopamine receptors, the drugs that are used to treat schizophrenics, and it stops being attracted to the cat urine. Irresistible angle is the generic crazy cat lady with a little apartment with 43 cats and their detritus, and that's an irresistible one in terms of toxic psychiatric status cats. But mainly, again, the same the point is exactly what you bring up, which is God knows what stuff is working there. Now, let's see, I was out with my baboons last summer. Um, this summer, Kenya, which is where my field site is, has had a rough couple of years with yeah. politics. Um, but in
but in terms of the actual baboon work, one of the areas where it's starting to go, starting to head, is this new, very trendy subject in stress and disease. You know, what I study in the baboons is individual differences in stress. If you're a wild baboon, what does your social rank, your personality, your patterns of social affiliation have to do with who's got the high blood pressure and the wrong cholesterol levels and the, who's more vulnerable to the stress-related diseases. Um, so there's been a very interesting field emerging in the last half dozen years or so, um, looking at one of those realms of biology. Okay, so you've got chromosomes, long strings of DNA, coding for your genes, all that, and at the ends of the chromosomes are these things called telomeres. The required by law metaphor is a telomere is like you got a shoelace and at the end of it you got the little plastic wrap in there. What does it do? It keeps the end of your shoelace from fraying and falling apart. And what's known is with every cycle of cell division, telomeres get a little shorter, and when they finally get short enough, the cell stops dividing, the cell has become senescent. And for lots of people, this is controversial, but lots of people feel that this whole process of telomere feel that this whole process of telomere shortening over time is the closest thing we have to a molecular calendar of aging going on in cells all over the place. Um, so what this study focused on was whether stress could accelerate the shortening of telomeres, accelerate the aging of chromosomes. So what do you typically do? You'll say, okay, let's get us some lab rats, or let's get us some fruit flies, or who knows what, and you know, 20 years from now with enough data, we'll say, hmm, maybe this has something to do with humans. That's not what happened in this case. Incredibly striking. Um, the first study was done with humans. With Poster children with human chronic psychosocial stress, the healthy, relatively young mothers of kids with horrible chronic illnesses. And these mothers were the primary caretakers, and this is like a devastating it's stressful as life can be in some ways for humans. And what they went and did was look at these women and looked at their white blood cells, their lymphocytes, and their telomeres were really shortened. And an utterly rough calculation for every year of caring for this seriously ill child, approximately seven years worth of shortening of telomeres in their 
and this is really quite striking. What's even more striking is it's pretty clear the likely pathway going from elevated levels of stress hormones to down at the level of chromosomes, these telomere things shortly. This is stress, this is psychosocial stress, this is going to bed each night wondering how long your child will live.